Now, there, there is a kind of myth out there that this is the new welfare. And it's, that's almost uh, a defamation of the SSI Kids program. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you know, in spite of all of the difficulties that we have as a country, I don't think this is the time to cut this program. However great our nation's fiscal challenges may be, we ought not to balance the budget on the backs of disabled children. Thank you. When JC was a baby, um, obviously, I'm, I'm a mother of six, and I pretty much can tell what stages a baby should be doing what. And uh, right around six months, his motor skills were up to par, but he wasn't babbling. And it was very much a concern to me. So um, when he went to um, his visits at the doctor, I talked to the doctor about my concerns about him not babbling. And um, they just kept telling me, oh, he's a boy, you know, he's slower than girls. Boys, they're slower than girls. Give it some time. He still has this frame where he can pick it up. So that continued for a few more months. And every time I would take him back for his shots, I would still address it with the pediatrician. And um, they just kept, you know, telling me the same thing until I switched doctors. And then I was like very aggressive and assertive and I said, I need my son to be addressed. I'm worried about him. He's not babbling. He's not saying mom, 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 dad, 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 dad. Something is not right. And I just felt it in my gut. And so they recommended that I get an evaluation done. So the people came out to his daycare and they did an evaluation. And they determined that he was delayed in social skills and in speech. And um, from that point on, they, he started receiving services. I was fortunate to catch it early. At that time, the services were um, once a week, every week, he would be picked up on a bus and he would be taken to a center where they would have interaction with him, where they would have him play with other children, where they would focus on his speech. And, um, and it, was, it was more interactive and it was the professionals, the experts working with him. And right now that I'm working, I'm just getting a professional coming out to the daycare once a week for an hour. So he's losing all of that time that he was going to the center and all of those people working with him and the other children being um, similar to Jay, he could relate to them or whatever the case may be. I found that he was improving faster that way. But because I have to work, I can't be home at three o'clock when the bus arrives with my son. There's nobody here. I'm, I'm at work until sometimes 8 o'clock in the evening because I have to work overtime. I have a whole family that depend on me, you know, and I just feel like JC's being sacrificed and his services are being sacrificed because mom's got to bring in, you know, the money. I wish there was just some way where I could balance both things. I want him in school. I want him to have the services. He needs that because I want him to be the most functional, independent individual as possible. Antoinette has yet to receive SSI benefits. Without SSI, JC's speech therapy regimen and special education has been hindered because she cannot afford specific services to further JC's progress in speech and other areas. What do you want to eat? I'll never forget as long as I live. He was two years old. Two years old was the first time he said, Mom. You know what I mean? I, I just broke down and cried. I'm going to cry now. Like, ah. Mom? Yes, Papa. <laughs> oh, I got you. Oh, I got you. Oh, I got you. Good Jesus. What happened there, Jay? What's that? Broop. When a family has um, a child who has a severe disability, uh, they can apply for SSI benefits. SSI stands for Supplemental Security Income. 
um, and it's a benefit program uh, that exists and was founded back in 1972 um, as part of the 1972 amendments to the Social Security Act. Um, it, uh, the purpose of the program was to aid adults as well as children who uh, were severely impaired by way of either physical or mental disabilities. One of the many groundbreaking things about this statute is that for the first time um, a disability program in the United States was going to recognize that children are al also have disabilities and that they are in, in need of extra support. Um, the prime sponsor of that particular provision was Senator Hathaway from Maine. Senator Hathaway's vision to support disabled children progressed in 1990 with the landmark Supreme Court case Sullivan v. Zebley. In a 7-2 decision, the Zebley Court found that the administration's criteria for SSI was inconsistent with its statutory mandate to protect children with disabilities that are of comparable severity to that of an adult. This eventually led to an individual evaluation of each child's functionality as part of their SSI assessment. Why don't you let them sit and settle, see if it comes down, see if we can see. Look at all the bubbles. Look at it. like it's a cloudy day or something, huh? Is it yes. coming up? Kimberly Kapanos is a mother of three in western Pennsylvania. Her daughters receive SSI because they are all suffering from learning disabilities and are on the autistic spectrum. Maribeth, the oldest, is 16, Lavender is 9, and Kashmir Page is 8. The youngest two also have ADHD. So for a child to have a diagnosis of ADHD, they need to have problems with attention and activity level and uh, impulsivity. But just having problems in those areas alone isn't sufficient. It needs to be causing the child some impairment. Oh, will you mind? Don't get mad at it. Just take your time. The specific treatments that have been shown to be helpful are behavioral interventions. Those are psychological treatments in which the parents and teachers or other adults in the child's life are taught strategies to better manage the child's problems with focus, uh, problems with activity. You probably better. You don't go nap. What did Miss Virginia ask you to do? Did you hear what your inst instructions were? This might be named right here. Kimberly regularly drives six hours a day to doctor and therapist appointments for her daughter's disabilities. Because Kimberly resigned from her job as a marketing director to care for her daughters, SSI helps pay for her daughter's necessary treatments. SSI allows Kashmir Page to take speech therapy classes to learn to enunciate and run a gamut of exercises to improve muscle function. A lot of children with severe mental health conditions and severe disabilities need a lot of extra help on a day-to-day -day basis with their general life skills. Everything from how to brush their teeth, how to get along with peers, how to get their material together to get ready for school, their, their coursework, their backpacks, just the basic everyday things that most children have no problem with, children with severe disabilities need a lot of extra help with. This marginalized portion of America's families has been thrust into national debate. The House recently passed a resolution to cut $1.4 billion from the program in fiscal year 2012. Though this ultimately was not adopted, the government's financial crisis continues to pressure cuts on spending. For example, in October 2011, the House held a hearing on the pitfalls of the program and questioned SSI's ability to help families of disabled children. Their children have medical conditions that are difficult to objectively measure and are coming onto the SSI program via increasingly subjective evaluations. It's very nice that um, there is so much testimony here that, that getting a child onto SSI is so difficult and the requirements are so strict and stringent. They are not. I guess because it was such a long, hard journey, I just wanted to make sure that this was a reminder of everything I've been through with him. 
After undergoing a thorough evaluation of his records, J.C. was only recently found eligible for SSI. The most recent year for which uh, SSI data are available is 2011. Um, in recent years, approximately 3 million children a year apply for SSI benefits, and in 2011, just 1.3 million children received SSI. That's about 1.6 percent of the U.S. child population, and it's only between 5 and 10 percent of all U.S. children with a disability. Once a parent has uh, put in an application for the child, um, the child's medical records are going to be scrutinized. Um, it's a state disability determination service, DDS, that does that process. Um, they review a comprehensive array of records and they use something called the whole child approach. What they seek to do is to look at the child, how the child functions at home, um, at school, in the community, kind of all aspects of the child's life um, in determining whether they meet the disability standard. Um, they can look to medical sources and they must look to medical sources as part of it, but they can also look to parent, um, teacher, and other people who know the child well. Mi nombre es Patricia Hernández, he estado en Filadelfia ya 13 años. Ariana es una niña preciosa, ella nació uh, sin la mollera, uh -huh. eh, le hicieron muchos estudios y me dijeron que estaba, que era de cabeza pequeña, de microcephaly. De ahí uh, empezó este, mm, empezó la el trabajo con ella, estar en hospitales, uh, eh, cada día este, ella se ponía un poco agresiva eh, por lo mismo de su condición. Ella antes tenía, este, se mordía mucho las manos, ella era uh, muy nerviosa, eh, pero con la terapia que dan en escuela y aquí que uno le habla, eh, le platica a uno, bueno, yo le platico, este, poco a poco ella ha quitado eso de estarse mordiendo las manos. Eso es un reto para mí porque eh, a mí me desesperaba mucho eso que se estuviera mordiendo. Pero ahora poco a poco eh, eso se le hemos ido quitando. Ella rechinaba mucho los dientes. Eh, E incluso este mmm, con los hermanos este antes ella no interactuaba con los hermanos ahora lo hace ella mmm, este los hermanos le hablan y ella voltea a verlos es una manera de que ella está aprendiendo más cosas o oh, ella está en una escuela pública Eh, pero en esa escuela pública hay un grupo pequeño de niños especiales este, y sí, hay muchos retos para ella. El primero es que yo quiero que ella camine porque ella ya es muy grande, ella pesa mucho, entonces este, eso es un reto para mí que, si Dios permite, eh, ojalá y que camine. Este, otro reto es de que la están enseñando cuando ella quiere hacer del baño. Ella tiene que tocar al maestro o a la persona que esté junto de ella. Ese es otro logro que vamos a tratar de, con la ayuda del maestro. Ella hace como dos semanas atrás o tres, a ella en la escuela le dio una convulsión. Eh, fue algo eh, que me puso muy mal porque a ella nunca le habían dado convulsiones. Pero fue algo, algo que tengo que superarlo porque yo sé que vienen muchas más. Fue algo que, que hasta ahora no puedo superar porque estoy sola aquí en este país. Eh, tengo que todos los días este, ser fuerte. I knew there was something different um, since the moment he turned like one. Um, he went from a baby to babbling and trying to speak to not anymore. So it was very different. He changed completely. Um, he didn't like the sensation of touching. 
I realized that by the time he was about eight months that he didn't like to be coddled. He didn't like to be held. But as he got older and I realized he wasn't speaking and it was just things he was going through with, he liked things in order, you know, whenever he played, it was, he liked to keep them here versus anywhere else around him, had to be in front of him. And if you touch things or move them from where they were, he would have a, you know, a fit just because I moved it from there to there. So I knew things were different. And then it came to a point where he was three and he still wasn't speaking. So we started, I started initially, started just doing sign language with him because I didn't know what was going on. But by the time he actually turned three, I, we realized something was wrong. So we started with early intervention um, for a couple months. And then from there forward, I had to kind of do my own investigation to get help for him. Well, it has definitely helped us a lot, the SSI program. It definitely has helped us a lot. Um, I, have never, I haven't been able to work full time in a long time. Being in the school system, dealing with them, the whole starting process, trying to figure out what was wrong, was just from the beginning tough. Uh, the beginning, he went from daycare to daycare. You done ran out the neighborhood daycares, what's next? You know, the whole thing of autism just wasn't really out there and explained to a lot of daycares and um, the whole thing of disabil mental disabilities. I don't think it was really, really discussed the way it should be discussed or the way it is now in daycares. SSI has allowed Omira to provide her son Esamir with the trainings and medications to function in everyday activities that are complicated by his autism and anxiety. With the guidance of medical professionals, Omira has been able to develop a targeted program over the years to manage and improve Esamir's development. I didn't like for him to be on medications. There's all, a lot of side effects of being on medication. Now that he's off, I see a whole totally different person too. You know, he's getting a little better here on, here on my block, of course. He's becoming what I call the popular kid, uh, which is great, because that means his social skills are, you know, a lot better than they were before. He's still one-minded, but uh, kid, the kids around here, because he's the older one, the one that's more friendly, that's more willing, and he doesn't fight and argue as much kids tend to just stay with him and, or around him and kind of follow him a little bit, which is kind of something I taught him also. And I'm always telling him, be a leader, not a follower. So it has come into play very well um, because, you know, I'm seeing him socialize a little better, uh, which is great, you know, for a kid his age and with, with being autistic. The threats to SSI uh, for kids are, are very real. They're not just speculative at this point. Um, indeed, last year, the House passed a budget resolution for fiscal year 2012, which included $1.4 billion in cuts to kids' SSI. We haven't received any financial help through disability debt yet. We just received a determination saying that my appeal was in favor. So still to this day, after two years of waiting for a decision, this has all been out of my shoestring budget just to try to keep us on, you know, keep us afloat. But now when that money does come, JC, I can take, you know, JC can get those things that I've always dreamed about giving him, you know? Let me get that little tape recorder that he can press play and he can listen to that tape and he can mimic those words those people are saying on that recording device. You know, those are things that I look forward to, you know? I look forward to having a conversation with my son. Because these kids, like I said, are our future, you know. Maybe they'll have changed things. Maybe those same kids will have changed our system the way it is now. It's for the better. You never know. <laughs>